All right, thanks for staying with us on News Hub. Uh, we want to take a look at an issue that's been uh, a national concern, especially for those who pay attention to not just our image, but for issues that really arise from when we don't tackle associated, or let me say related uh, issues. Issues, issues will be the operative words this morning on the show. Uh, okay, we want to discuss how the agenda for the EFCC chair should be. What it should be like, what it should contain as a people. Yes, he has a mandate that he must really uh, follow through and pull off. But then what are the people looking forward to? What is Nigeria's image uh, abroad uh, seen to be? Uh, what do we portray as a people? And how do we conduct our businesses, our transactions with other people? Uh, so these are the things we want to take a look at this morning. What set the agenda for the new EFCC and ICBC, ICPC leadership this morning and joining us is Odiana Erata. we thank you so much the legal practitioner who also pays who pays attention a lot to things that happen i'm also clearing my throat here good morning <laughs> so much Odiana. i think there's a there's a challenge thank there you. oh good morning thank you for joining us on the show so yeah, thank you for having me president malatinubu is making a lot of appointments and two of them uh, for the ICPC new one, EFCC new one. The one for Mr. Luke Ede, of who is now the chairman of the EFCC, brought a lot of opera. Once last week, you saw the people, uh, interested uh, uh, people there, went to the National Assembly to really protest against him uh, being appointed, or let me say, confirmed as the EFCC chair. But the Senate did, regardless. So let, let that be the starting point today. The emergence of the leadership of the two main anti graft agencies. What would you say your view uh, is? Well, I, I think um, the appointment of the chairman of the Economic and Financial Crime Commission, um, Mr. Ola Loke, they actually generated a lot of controversy. Uh, will I say that is uh, almost rested now? But I wouldn't say so because I understand some uh, public interest uh, uh, lawyers and some other NGOs have uh, taken steps. I think some are most taking steps to go to court to challenge uh, the process or the appointment and all that. For me, as a lawyer, if you look at you know uh, Section uh, Two, Three of the Economic and Financial Crime Commission, um, is it's, it's clear, though not too clear, um, the, the, the law is talking about, you know, uh, someone who has uh, 15 years cognitive uh, experience, must have been in any government uh, uh, security agency, uh, maybe with a uh, minimum of the office of the assistant commissioner of police. Uh, I understand from the profile I read of uh, Mr. Ola Lukoyede uh, that he has been with the EFCC for um, a number of years now and also has worked with the previous chairman and has also worked as secretary of uh, you know, the commission. Uh, to that extent, uh, we will say that where he would have had a uh, cognate uh, experience and has been in the system uh, for me, if you take that to court at the end of the day, I am sure um, the, the court will, will look at it from that perspective that uh, he's qualified and that he was uh, validly appointed. And let us not forget the appointment of the various uh, chairman of uh, Economic and Financial Crime Commission had always generated controversy. Uh, starting with the appointment of uh, uh, Ribadu. When Ribadu was appointed, he was actually uh, knocked up to um, the off. Friendly with us this morning, but we need to really bring the background to the fore for the benefits of those watching and for the purpose of this discussion. Also note that you can be part of the discussion today. I want to imagine that what heralded the appointment of uh, the Lukede as the chairman of the EFCC, we remembered for a very long time. Uh, I can't remember that we've had instances like that in the past, but not recent past, where those stakeholders will come out en masse to really 
uh, you know, come against the appointment of someone. I remember when uh, Loretta Onoche was supposed to be uh, really uh, appointed to head INEC, uh, so to be the resident INEC commissioner in, in her state, people came out and said, look, no, she has some uh, political affiliations. If you brought her in then, she will already be biased. But in this case, uh, the appointment emerges of Oluke, they will continue to be a reference point for those who really are not very happy now they feel that he's not been able to meet up with the requisite conditions for him to be able to assume the office. But that's set aside. If he, his, his appointment has been, uh, you know, okayed by the National Assembly, and which really says he now is the one in charge. Uh, so uh, that's not also not to leave out the fact that at the ICPC also there are issues around there. Uh, I'm happy to have you back, Odiana. Uh, in the ICPC, the new man at the hems of affair there is uh, Musa Aliyu, who actually uh, took over from Bola Giovanni, a law professor himself, whose statutory tenure remained about three months for him to go. He, we heard, we heard actually had um, put in for uh, a pre-retirement uh, notification before the appointment came. So uh, let's wrap this one together so we can move on from here, Udiana. Now, regardless of the issues behind Olukoyede, now he's the chairman of the EFCC, until otherwise stated, that's the way it is. His assumption of office, what are those things you feel he should tackle headlong as soon as possible? Well, I, I, I think I will uh, propose um, an entire overhaul of the uh, structure. I mean structure the various departments and segments of uh, the EFCC. Because after the reign of Nuhuri Badu, uh, Farida Waziri, um, Ibrahim uh, Lamode, again, we saw some bites, very serious bites, when uh, Magu came in, until possibly uh, the way he was uh, exited. Then when uh, um, Abdul Rashid Power came in, we also saw some it was slow movement because some of us do patronize efcc either representing a client or we're on the side of you know uh, representing uh, some of those suspects you see that the morale and the the modus operandi of efcc is not the efcc of the old I agree some of us do not agree there should be high-handedness on the part of efcc we very much believe that the rule of law must be observed at all times. But you then discover that a very close interface with the EFCC of today, you agree with me, it's not uh, like the EFCC of yesterday. Uh, there is now much concentration on the politicians, the governors, and, and maybe House members and all that, and the Yahoo boys and all that, the cybercrime aspect. For me, that is good. Uh, that is good because... Uh, the, 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 those who are into cybercrime uh, uh, fraud and all that kind of stuff have actually given us a very terrible image in addition to our public uh, office uh, holders. But I, I, I want a situation where first the morale of the workers need to be rejected in a way that when you get to EFCC, you now know that, okay, you now mean you know, a team of a people that are ready to work. You see a situation today, if you submit a petition at EFCC, well, they will tell you within the 30 days, whatever, to get an approval. When you are lucky to get an approval, you are now beginning to see an EFCC that will ask you to go and bring the full number of the suspect, go and locate the house of the suspect, go and look at the time that the suspect will be around. That was not, that was not the EFCC of the old. Once a, a petition is approved by the EFCC, you know that your 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 the anxiety is almost 100 percent solved because they will go headlong they'll go to the internet they'll go through the bank they'll go through any other means to ensure that they go entire information about that uh, suspect and they will move in but today it is no longer that way i believe the new efcc chairman should do more first with the staff and the morale of the staff then secondly we must not focus entirely on the politicians alone where are the public servants that aid the politicians from the local government to the state to the federal level? I think those are the areas I believe 
the new FCC chairman should, you know, get involved in and ensure the new FCC chairman look at it must ensure that he separates himself from the politics of the country. Yeah, don't get involved in the politics of the business. I am sure at the end of the day, we'll be able to meet the desired goal that is expected of uh, a brand new uh, uh, EFCC. All right. Uh, the, the number will be on the screen. The reason for this is we'd like to get Nigeria's views on how they intend to see the main uh, anti-corruption agencies work. Uh, during the administration of former President Muhammad Bukhari, there were a lot of expectations based on the fact that he joined campaign, did make uh, anti-corruption fights, one of the uh, tripod on which his administration would rest. But this administration uh, really talks about the economy and all of that, but some would argue it's not really, really coming out to talk about how it intends to fight graft. So uh, the mandates openly stated by the, uh, the EFCC Act as well as ICPC Act, but the expectations of Nigerians within and outside the country. So here's my question at this point, Odiana. When you look around us, the, the, the CPI, the Corruption uh, Performance Index across the Federation, puts Nigeria not at number one now. Some other countries are finding their ways up there. Uh, it's not uh, for us to start to jubilate because we should not even be on that list at all. But what are you seeing? Uh, are, are there ways, aside from what you mentioned earlier on, that you expect that the new uh, uh, leadership of the uh, anti graft agencies should work that will first not only bring the workforce together and be in line with what they want to do, but also see the people to really trust in the processes that will lead to get ridding the country of corruption? I have mentioned that um, a while ago that the chairman of EFCC and that of the FCPC must, must distance themselves from the politics of the day. Because what has made the previous uh, regime at the EFCC a bit a comatose or was perceived as a tool by those who were governments to which haunt other people was the involvement in the politics of the day. Once you start getting involved, then that confidence is no longer there. People will not have confidence in your operations. There shouldn't be any form of sacred cow. So myself as a lawyer, I, I keep on wondering, is there any other way we can devise a means of appointing the EFCC chairman or that of the ICPC? Because, you know, Nigerians will always say, he who pays the piper detests the tone. We, we saw the Buhari's, uh, the Buhari's administration that came up with the whole high hope for fighting corruption. To some extent, we saw some major arrests. We also discovered that most of those battles, none was actually convicted. Even when, you know, there was also this attitude that oh, once you join the ruling party, your sins are forgiven. So the presidency, the federal government must allow the appointees or the new sheriffs at the EFCC and the ICPC to do their work. So a situation where there are always some political undercurrent that will not, uh, you know, serve well for the image of the um, anti-corruption agencies. Those you also discover that majority of those who were indicted you know, previously by the previous um, um, uh, administration, I would say it, at the EFCC and ICPC. Most of them are in government. And so many of their cases have not been fully determined. And these we are the same persons had the opportunity to possibly screen or clear the incoming pensmen at the two agencies. So it's a bit of a challenge. I think what they should do now that they are substantive chairman of the, um, the ICPC and the EFCC is to disentangle themselves from whatever political uh, lineage that is, uh, you know, fully involved and do that job. And at the end of the day, I'm sure Nigeria will be good for it. 
Then secondly, we also have this idea, I also mentioned that earlier, that they are only succeed in chasing the small cooks and thieves, like the Yahoo boys and all that. And we also saw of recent, um, mostly on the part of the EFCs, um, unlawfully, even sometimes with uh, a valid search warrant, sometimes without providing a valid search warrant, invading the house of uh, suspects. I still want to look at the whole of that so that at the end of the day, you should have confidence um, uh, at the Economic and Financial Commission and the, um, the ICPC. Uh, now for those who are wondering, uh, some have been arguing that, look, we don't have, we don't need multiple agencies to deal with certain national, you know, issues. For instance, they've been calling for the uh, harmonization of the ICPC and the EFCC to just be one agency of government that can do all that we have to do. As we speak, the ICPC targets at public offices, while the EFCC has a wider dragnet to really tackle corruption in the country. But when we take a look at the Transparency International uh, reports, the CPI index for the year 2022, uh, Nigeria scored 24 out of the 100 points available and actually was ranked 150th. It was that position that we held at up until now that we are other people. But here's my question, Diana. The public sector is said to be most, uh, you know, uh, uh, culpable of perpetrating corruption in Nigeria. Leave individuals that we'll deal with in just a moment. So if the public service is perceived to be highly corrupt, and uh, we have other people that have to oversee what they do. How do we tackle corruption within the public sector uh, from what you've experienced in the past? Well, I, I think that, that again, um, from the commencement of this interview, I, I did mention that the anti-corruption uh, crusade seem to be focusing on the politicians and those in the public sector. And if you go um, beyond that, I, I am of the view that the, um, the procurement process, the procurement process in Nigeria from the local government to the state level to the federal government is defective. Defective in a way that there's no public officer that will succeed in engaging in homogous corruption without the collaboration of the civil servants. So the issue now is to what extent do we have a very strong procurement process in every ramification? For instance, um, how the start of governors who tied kilometer of roads Oh, sorry. I think the network there uh, isn't friendly. Odiana, we do hope that you join us again. Uh, the reason I'm why... Sorry. Okay, you're back. If you can hear me, we missed a little bit of what you said in the last 20 seconds or thereabout. Can you please come over it again? Hello. We missed out on what you said for about 20 seconds. Can you please come over it again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the point, the point I was trying to make is that the corruption in the public uh, sector is that deep because we do not have strong institutions. And that for you to tackle the corruption in there, you must not look at the uh, politicians who come and go, like they said, so they ask and go and the barrack remain. You must look inward at the civil servants and the procurement process from the bottom to top, from the local government to the state and that of the, um, the federal, various federal agencies. What is the nature of procurement process that we have? I think the EFCC must be proactive in getting in, involved in what goes on in every segment of the government sectors by looking at their books, not just when the politician comes because they can't steal without the collaboration 
of the civil servant of, of the of those who are in the system so that is my point that we must get involved in who in the okay yes these ones have been promoted as directors as primary secretaries and all that what is the interface what is the surveillance on this set of people who normally possibly provide viable platform for the politicians to steal i i, I think that is the area we, i believe we must use uh, you know interrogate to enable us to tackle the the, the corruption in the various uh, public sectors all right uh, so so let's let's switch gears a little bit now let's talk about uh, the accusation uh, the leveled against previous administrations of selective handling of corrupt cases uh, for instance, if the cronies of the family members or friends, political affiliates are involved in any corruption case, they may be left off the hook. In fact, during that administration, it was uh, alleged that uh, you had to just port, and that means you had to just, it meant then you had to defect to a particular political party for your sins to be uh, you know, washed and be as white as snow. Uh, is this a form of worry to you uh, at this point in time as well? Well, I, I think it's, it's, it's a very dangerous trend. One, um, I will start from the most recent. Um, it, it might be the rich, it may not be. You, you heard that Senator is fine above and abrasted, joined the a Progressive Congress. And in a few days, there were information that some of the uh, cases he had with AMCOM was discontinued and struck out. There's also this impression that, oh, once you join the ruling party, your sins are forgiven. And this started with the last, or oh, with the previous regime. I don't want to, uh, you know, I don't want to pin it down on the Buhari's uh, regime. It happened before the President Buhari's uh, but it was more, more profound when President Buhari was in power. There was this strong impression that the former Attorney General, whether right or wrong, you know, had serious influence over those who were in charge of the anti corruption fight in Nigeria. And as such, there were a lot of you know, undercurrents that possibly leads to compromise of some very obvious cases that would have led to conviction. I think the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and those around him must put up a posture that will not, you know, make Nigeria believe that it is business as usual. You know, once someone is facing a, a corruption case we must okay uh, you have to land on that we have to reconnect with you so that we can sound out uh, all these segments of the show so he's saying that once anyone is found wanting any way or the other okay please go on okay the network is fluctuating actually oh Diana Ariata the um we are not getting your voice out again. Uh, however, we have to round off uh, with being here at this point in time. Um, if you can hear me, let me hear your voice. If you can hear me, we have to go uh, within a minute. Can you hear me, Odiana? I can hear you. I All right. You. We missed out the last few seconds of what you said, but join this with, the, with this next question, which we expect for you to deal with within a minute. The conduct of officials of these two agencies will have to carry out the responsibilities, the mandates of the agencies. So what are your expectations? Well, um, from the last uh, comment I just made, I am saying that the government of they must be careful or have some sense of, must be careful not to be seen uh, doing what the previous, previous government did by possibly allowing political actors to make mess of the anti-corruption fight uh, by asking them to join the ruling party 
and once that is done, your sins are forgiven. Or cases against you are withdrawn. That is on 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 one hand. Then you are saying, um, if if I remember the sorry, what was the last uh, aspect of your question? Yeah? So there have been some uh, allegations of corruption, of high handedness, of maltreatment, of all kinds of uh, allegations against them. In twenty seconds, we have to go. Yeah, yes, I, I think the, the two agencies should be mindful on how some of these cases are being handled. Uh, for instance, the, like I said, there are cases where there are no, though the agencies keep on denying that, mostly EFCC, where there are no valid um, uh, warrants of arrest or no valid search warrants and properties of uh, the citizens are invaded. Uh, for instance, there was one very chaotic one that happened uh, in the southeast. One of the previous, uh, one of the former governors uh, agreed. They said, you know, the former governor was evading arrest, but Nigerians or most citizens were not too happy. The way and manner the house of a citizen was evaded. I think they must balance it. First, we like the Azi to go after those who are corrupt or those who are corrupt, uh, committed crimes, but they must ensure the rule of law is followed to the latter. Because at the end of the day, they will also end up trying to hide under the rule of law. Right. Louis Badu did it, Mago did it, and uh, Bawa now is seeking for the protection of the uh, rule Absolutely. of law and asking the government to play by the rule of law. Okay, so, so we must not forget. We must not forget that there's a day... Oh, after, Diana, we, we, we have to go now. We have to go now. Thank you very much because you landed on what everyone has been looking forward to, doing the job according to the rule of law, and that will be the payoff uh, for you this morning on the show. We'll be speaking with legal practitioner, Odiana Ariata. We're we'll taking a look at the agendas that should go with the mandates given to the ICPC and EFC leadership from now henceforth. Well, thank you once again, Odiana, for your time and thoughts on the show. Thank you for having me.